Hi everyone, this is Ed Hammerly. Welcome to my chicken coop once again. Today I'm going to be talking about my new upgraded uh, chicken waterer. Actually, we have two separate systems here, but this is the first system I'm going to go ahead and show you, and I'll explain this, this uh, other one later. Um, this chicken waterer system it uses chicken nipples, these little red uh, with a little stainless steel uh, plug at the bottom where they peck underneath and get a, a couple drops of water one at a time. Um, first and foremost, the reason why you, want, you would want to do this is for the health reasons. It is far healthier. You can reduce disease significantly in your flock. Um, everyone who's in the business of chickens, whether it be a large commercial scale or even your regular um, uh, home, uh, home uh, flock, are switching over to this. It saves water, again, it's healthier. Um, and for me, the other big feature was that it it's also saves me a lot of time. Uh, we were coming out to the coop every single day to clean the water uh, container. They poop on it, they kick food, food in it, they kick debris in it. With this system, on the outside one, I have, I have two systems you're gonna see. One is the non-freezing system. Uh, no ice system, and the other one is the winter ice condition system. So this system here is going to be connected to a garden hose 24 hours a day, seven days a week, does not have to be touched. You never have to worry about feeding them water or cleaning out the container. It'll go, it'll uh, pressurize this uh, PVC pipe to about one or two PSI, and it will supply these uh, chicken nipples, nipples here that uh, the chickens can come up to at any time. I've also chosen this location because of the overhang here. It'll provide some shelter for them from predators from above. Uh, it'll give them shade. It'll actually, I guess, keep the, the water inside cooler as opposed to baking in the sun. So anyway, take a look around and I'll show you what I've done. Thank you. One added benefit is it gives easier access to all birds. With the pecking order, sometimes the more dominant birds get first dibs at the water. Here, it's spread out, uh, spread out over a larger area and everyone gets their fair share. So here's where we hook up the garden hose. This little red hose then goes to this regulator and you'll notice if you look closely, you may not be able to see it, but you can change the pressure setting by turning it back and forth. For the record, anyone looking to purchase this water pressure reducing valve, also referred to as a 4090 water regulator, can find it on the internet. You can Google it. I've seen it on Amazon as well. I've also seen other chicken coop owners use a spackling bucket with a toilet bowl float. This is obviously an option, but I like the cleaner, simpler, uh, idea, although it's probably slightly more expensive. Okay, so here's the inside of the coop. We have this hose. It, it, we have a little hose barb and uh, fitting here that we switched from this small little hose to into the PVC. I also installed a removable cap on the end so that you can either flush out the system or drain it during the winter. One bit of advice if you're going to use the garden hose system is make sure your hose back to the house or barn or what have you is in the shade. You don't want your flock subjected to very high water temperatures. Okay, so this is the system I'm going to be using for eight months out of the year or as long as I can get away with before freezing temperatures come about. And this is system number two, the winter months. So with freezing conditions, we obviously won't have the luxury of having a garden hose attached to this system, which is why I have two and not just the one on the outside. I've decided to put the wintertime waterer on the inside for several reasons. One is that the coop heater will actually radiate into the coop itself, keeping the, the coop warmer. 
the chickens themselves will actually produce a lot of heat and keep the coop warmer than the outside temperature. And additionally, during the winter months when things are really bad, heavy snow or blowing rain or what have you, the chickens are more likely to be inside and I want to have the water close to them. So here's what I'm using to keep the water from freezing. It's a pail and bird bath de-icer. It's 200 watts, it has a thermostat, and it's submersible. I'm also plugging it in to a GFI outlet, so humans and the flock are all safe. So not only am I getting all the benefits of the chicken water nipples, but I'm also increasing my capacity of water storage by three or four times. You also see below, I used a two x four underneath it just to help support the weight. I have plumbing straps on either side, but 20 gallons of water is pretty heavy. Here's the hole I made at the top of the tank. This is where I've inserted my heater. Uh, I'm going to play it by ear and see how things go during the winter as to whether or not I'm going to close this hole or seal it or make it accessible. But for now, this is how it's going to stay. Every couple weeks, when it needs refilling, it can be done from the outside. Want to learn more about chickens, chicken coops, chicken waterers, sustainability, renewable energy, EV charging stations, or anything else in between, contact me on YouTube. Thank you.